Yes. Uh, so thank you. So I'll be talking about the topic of self-testing and uh, in this case, some of what it is and um, some of what assumptions you can and cannot make in the realm of self-testing. So the setting we're working with is we have some kind of unknown quantum device. We wish to verify that uh, works according to some specification. We, however, want to use uh, at least little resources and we might have issues with, among others, either we do not understand how this uh, device is supposed to work or we do not necessarily trust uh, even the manufacturers of this device. But we still want to somehow be able to um, test this device and make certain certifications about the device. And now the device in question we are going to be working is it's typically a device that somehow um, prepares a quantum state of some kind and um, then can perform measurements on it. And it will be in a uh, two-party se um, setting. So it will have, uh, yes, uh, two parties. Now, the way we'll be modeling this setting is uh, through a non-local game. That is, we'll have, um, the, we'll have three players. The, we, we ourselves, as a verifier, will be playing the referee while the device in question will essentially take on the roles of the two players, Alice and Bob. Now, before the game starts, Alice and Bob are allowed to communicate, share a strategy, but as soon as the game starts, they are no longer allowed to communicate. They are, however, beforehand allowed to share some kind of quantum state. The game then progresses by the referee asking Alice and Bob each a question, S and C, and they can then perform measurements on their state and supply uh, back an answer. And so, so this is the general setting we'll be working with. Now an example of such game would be the so-called magic square game. So this is a game where you have a three by three grid, which um, you have to fill with plus minus ones. Um, so the magic square game itself has the rules that um, any red line, so a, um, for example, the top row, has to be, have the product of one, while the blue line has to have a product of minus one. And in this setting, um, it is fairly straightforward to see that uh, if there's no way to plug just plus minus one into this grid to actually reach, uh, satisfy all these conditions there is going to be some kind of, um, you are going to make an error essentially. And so we'll transform this setting into a game instead where we have Alice is given some row to fill and Bob is given a column. And now the way Alice and Bob wins this game, um, and I forgot to mention it's a cooperative game, um, is by fulfilling whatever condition is on either the row or the column, and if they um, agree on whatever uh, variable they, were, uh, they both share, uh, depending on which row and column they've received. Um, and so classically working with no quantum stuff, uh, there is no way to fill this uh, grid, and this also means there is no way just to play this game if you do not have any kind of classical, um, sorry, quantum state shared. However, there does exist a quantum strategy. That is, as soon as we give uh, um, Alice and Bob access to this shared strategy, they can actually uh, win with, um, with certainty. And it is this kind of structure that we will be using to do the black boxes. That is, we'll be looking at games where having a quantum state means that you can uh, get an advantage. And therefore, if we somehow see a player playing um, optimally, that is always winning, or at least winning with uh, a higher probability than is classically possible, then we can certify that, oh, at the very least, they must have used some kind of uh, quantum approach to, uh, 
to achieve this uh, winning probability. Now, so a bit formula, uh, yeah, uh, formal. Um, we'll be working with uh, strategies, and when I'm talking about a strategy, it will consist of a shared state of some kind that Alice and Bob has prepared beforehand, um, where Alice and Bob each has some of it and do not have access to the spaces for which uh, for the other players. So not in any way breaking this uh, non-communication um, barrier. Furthermore, each of Alice and Bob will also have a set of POVM measurements dependent on whatever uh, set uh, of questions. That is, for every uh, question, the, this will be a set of POVM measurements corresponding to whatever measurements Alice and Bob would apply to the, uh, to the state. And then the strategy is simply a tuple. And now the big wish would be, let's say we uh, observe that Alice and Bob plays this game and they achieve the optimal probability of winning. Can we then fully determine whatever strategy Alice and Bob must have used? Sadly, this uh, is actually a no, but we can determine it up to local isometries. That is, we can get very close to determining what must Alice and Bob have done. And this is what we can um, use to certify whatever the uh, device is, because we can, at the very least, be fairly certain of the inner workings and the state must have been prepared. So, to get into a little bit of what we're doing, we are looking at the at local dilations. So, for two strategies, S and S tilde, we say that S tilde is a local dilation of S if we have some local isometry and an auxiliary state, such that for all question and answers, applying the local isometry to, this, uh, to these measurements on the states uh, extracts the, the S tilde state. So this should be seen as that using only local uh, operations, we are somehow able to extract this S tilde state and some auxiliary stuff placed in the AUX state um, from the strategy S. And this essentially it is that, oh, these strategies are, do essentially the same up to small local changes. And this is essentially what self-testing is. That is, we say that a game self-test um, some reference strategy as tilde. If for all optimal strategies, as tilde is a local dilation or in other words, that S tilde is essentially the only way we can actually play this game and achieve a optimal um, strategy or an optimal um, value or a probability of winning. So, and to go back to the magic square game, this is an example of such a game where the there exists a strategy that the magic square game self-test, that is, this is essentially a strategy you always have to use when you do any kind of um, self-testing. So, however, um, when we do this, uh, there are some, uh, it is not necessarily clear that, oh, we have an example of where it happened, we, but this also is, a, we missed a bit of an example where it didn't happen, because often, and it's actually a lot of examples, there is a way to, um, to as that some game where you achieve a quantum advantage, you actually are able to do a self-test on. Now, there has been a previous result where they, um, they showed that the glue magic square game uh, same rules as before with red or blue, uh, does not self-test any strategy. But it, this example still self-tests some uh, state. That is, and what I mean by state is 
oh, what if we do no longer uh, care about the measurements, but only care about are we always able to extract some state? And this is the first result that we uh, present in this work. That is um, a, sorry, a, uh, a game which can not self-test even a state, so we can in no way be sure what exactly did the uh, device actually do in this, um, if it, they played the game. Um, so to present this, I'll be presenting a construction we can uh, call the all game. And this all game is simply a way to um, construct a new game based on two previous games. And the way it works is that players receive questions um, from both of the games at the same time, G1 and G2. Then each player chooses a game to play and the players wins if they chose the same game and they won according to the rules of that game. So essentially we give them a degree of freedom and in this they could always just choose to play either one or the other. But what this does is it allows us to combine games and sort of make multiple uh, winning strategies. That is multiple strategies that is optimal because the players can always play one game or the other. Um, so one way you can create a game that cannot self-test a state um, is to simply take that G1 is the magic square game, which has a reference uh, Smith rank of four, and we take a game two to be uh, some game that can be played perfectly with a reference strategy uh, that is essentially just has to be odd, uh, have odd Smith rank. So we can construct one that has a Smith rank three. And then um, it would be impossible for this game to self-test any um, state be because if we had some kind of state that could always be extracted, then it would mean that it has to be able to be extracted from both optimal solutions to G1 and G2, which uh, because of their um, reference strategies being co-prime and the game having a quantum advantage cannot be one. And so this gives a way to construct counterexamples. Um, and in general, this is actually the approach we also use for an other counterexamples, uh, specifically another one. Um, this idea of combining multiple games and sort of achieving properties of the multiple games. So one thing that when we did this kind of self-testing um, definition was it was all going to be exact. So I said that um, it has to be, they have to display an optimal probability of winning. Now the issue is that in the real world, the, this is not really a plausible way to do it because we cannot uh, necessarily determine the exact probability of winning some uh, system has. And maybe it, there is a due to noise, small errors. So in the topic of making self-test robust, we instead um, say that if you have any near optimal strategy, then there also exists a strategy uh, as hat that is very close to this reference strategy that we can map to. So somehow it is, and this is a very informal way to um, describe it, but essentially there always exists a way to get close to the optimal strategy, depending on um, the way it was implemented. So, and in this we can also do a um, non-robust self-test, that is a self-test where if it is constructed using, again, as G1, the magic square game, and G2 is a game that has uh, no perfect quantum strategy, but, but still has a sequence of strategies where winning probabilities converge to one. Now, this cannot be a self-test 
for the reason that um, you can be optimal when you play G1, but you can get arbitrary close to the optimal by playing G2. So the ex if we do something that is near optimal, it could be from both G1 and G2, and these strategies are very much uh, non-similar, while this is still just a uh, robust uh, self-test from playing G1. And finally, we also, um, so the main idea was doing this, um, making as few assumptions when doing self-testing as possible because we are trying to essentially backbus test a device. And one assumption I did make was that I assumed this arbitrary strategy to use a pure state. And now a question could be, is this actually a fair assumption? Um, so we say a mixed of test is when we have some kind of mixed strategy. And then we require that um, for every purification, we should be able to extract this uh, reference strategy. And this uh, extraction, the isometries that is used in the extraction, should act with identity on the purification space. Um, and Differentiate just from previous definition, well, I'll just be referring as the previous one as, as pure. Now, it's non-obvious that this is actually uh, equivalent to the, uh, to the previous definition. That is, we suddenly introduce a new concept of uh, essentially classical randomness into this problem. Um, but it turns, and first, yeah, it can be shown that it is not an unfair to assume that the reference strategy is pure because it, you can never make it mixed. You can always use some kind of uh, purification to get a pure state. Um, but we can, what we actually are able to show is that even if you have only a pure self-test, that is, you have made an assumption of the purity of the state, then if the reference strategy has full Smith rank, then the this game is also a mixed self-test. So essentially you can make these um, purification assumptions which can significantly um, make proof significantly simpler since we do not have to in any way care about the mixedness. And it's not an unfair assumption to make the full Smith rank assumption since um, in some ways this reference strategy has to be the simplest way to do it, which usually also ends up uh, involving uh, a full Smith range uh, strategy. But, and finally, just for uh, an uh, example, there is, we do know of examples where we can do a self test that is pure and does not have full Smith rank. So, a very brief example is still uh, just to take the magic square game and then simply put on a um, an additional we tensor it with something more that we do not work with that lives in a higher space because it's not going to have any impact and we can extract it from some kind of uh, the reference strategy. And I think that is mostly what I wanted to talk about here. So thank you. A nice talk. Uh, questions from the audience? Thanks for the talk. Um, I had a question about the OR that you did for getting the non self test of the state. Yeah. I was wondering if, so you have basically two strategies, one of them using the state for the first one, the other using the state for the second one. Can you get anything that's not any of those? Or is there a way you think to classify what states can be used as optimal states? For example, in the glued magic square game, you don't get a self-test for strategies, right? Sorry, which game? Uh, yeah, yeah, the, that one over there. Yes. Yeah. Not, not this one, the previous one. Yeah, that. Um, so this is not necessarily what I did. 
um, most. But um, I believe there is, at the very least, uh, some situations. I know of other examples, not necessarily this, where you can uh, classify what kind of strategies that can be done, uh, specifically in the uh, glued uh, magic square game, that is. Uh, no, I'm asking, like, yes. here uh, but you, you get no self-test for the state because, if I understand correctly, there's two games. Yes. And each of them has a different state that wins them optimally, so you could use either depending on which game you choose to play. Yes. I'm saying, are those the only two ways that you can win this game, or is there a third option of a state that would be uh, neither the state that would be winning the first game or the second game um, uh, that you could use yes. to win this or game? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I would guess there isn't, but uh, I do not know for certain. Like, for example, in the glued magic square game, as you said before, you get a self-test for the state, but not the operators. But in Laura's paper, they show, for example, that convex combinations of the two operators for the two different strategies give you yes. strategies, right? So maybe something over here of a similar flavor is happening where you don't have a self-test for the state, but maybe you do, in a certain sense, still classify what the states are. Uh, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I would imagine so, but I'm not sure. I know you can do these kind of statements, and I know it has been done for the glued magic square game, but I'm not sure if it... Uh, it seems likely uh, you could also do it for this, since it is, in many ways, similar to the glued magic square game. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, so then I have one. I'm wondering, do, do you think it is possible to create some sort of uh, partial condition for which games uh, that do and do not admit robust self-testing um, I'm honestly not sure. So one of the things that is with this game is you end up with um, that, that there's a lot of inputs that is uh, in the self-testing never used. Like um, if you do a perfect game, you are never going to play play playing game two. So there might be that you can somehow say, oh, all um, possible question answer pairs have to be, or in, we, we have some kind of the um, input output has to be restricted, but I'm not sure if you can, uh, how well that can be done. But, but it is plausible, I wouldn't uh, say. Very good, thank you. Let's uh, thank the speaker. So next up, we have uh, Rani Liu Chen from University of Copenhagen. Are you ready? To, very good. The okay. Yours. Okay, thanks for the introduction, and thank you everyone for coming to my talk. My name is Rani Liu Chen, but you can just call me Chen because it's basically everyone, how everyone call me, and it's much simpler. Okay, uh, great. So for the next half an hour, I will introduce to you how to self-test an arbitrary real projective measurement. So uh, let's begin with some backgrounds. I'm sure that David have already did part of it in his talk, but maybe some of you missed the beginning of that talk. So I would nevertheless do it again, just to make sure you are m to, to make you more familiar with the topic of self-testing. Okay, so let's start uh, with a simple question. So suppose you interact with a box, uh, some magical box, where you press some button on it, uh, essentially me meaning that you ask them it's some questions from a finite question set, and it gives you some answer from a finite answer set again. Okay, now suppose this box can be quantum, so it's, so, but, but you don't know what exactly uh, the state it is preparing or the measurement it is performing. So uh, essentially, uh, our players uh, can model its behavior as a state preparation and a measurement on the state according to the question it gets from you. 
Okay, so now uh, a simple question would be, oh, if I know what exactly the states and the measurement operators are, can I predict the probability distribution that uh, of its uh, of this question answer pair? The answer is quite simple, right? We just uh, do some matrix multiplication and we sandwich this the uh, measurement operator with the state vector, then we get the probability distribution. Okay, but if somehow I ask you the inverse question, right? Uh, so, for example, if, if we observe this probability distribution p a given x, then I know in my heart that it can be produced by some uh, measurement acting on some state. Uh, can I make sure that uh, this magical box is doing exactly what I have in mind? Okay, okay. so in fact, it is not gonna be possible uh, because in principle, there are multiple ways of uh, producing this uh, probability distribution. And in this case, uh, specifically, this box can even be classical, right? It could be some super powerful uh, classic, but still classical computer that's uh, doing matrix multiplication and simulating everything. Uh, as long as we don't put a limitation on its running time, we will not be able to distinct it from any real quantum box, okay? okay. But the good news is that the things is, are different in what we call the Bell scenario. Right, where a referee interacts with two instead of just one uh, quantum players. They ask some questions uh, from the question set X and Y and get answers from A and B. Uh, the players might share states before the game starts and they will perform the measurement according to the question they get and answer uh, from its uh, measurement output. Okay, the only restriction for them is that they are not to, allowed to communicate uh, during the game, right? And again, this, uh, the first uh, question is easy again. We can just uh, uh, compute the uh, probabilistic uh, probability uh, according to the uh, Born's rule. But again, the interesting thing is that for some particular P, it is uh, possible that we can determine the underlying quantum functionality uh, only from those observable, uh, uh, only, sorry, only from, from this uh, probability distribution that this referee can observe, right? And if uh, this thing, such a thing happens, we call it a self-test, and uh, a self-test essentially enables us to classically verify uh, those quantum devices. Uh, the only thing that we need to trust is that, okay, first we need to believe that the, the, the quantum mechanics is true, the quantum theory is the theory that describes the world we are living in, and the second thing is that we need to trust the war that we build between those two players. We really need to uh, believe that they are not communicating during the game, and it could be done by uh, locating them far away enough, so that's the cannot communicate during the game. Uh, okay, let's be more specific about those terminologies. Okay, so from now I will call this uh, probability distribution P, A, B given X, Y a correlation because it somehow reflects how those two players are correlated. And I will call this S a strategy of P, this tuple of uh, the state they share and the measurement operators belongs to Alice and Bob respectively. And I will call that this uh, S is a strategy for this P if uh, it generates this uh, probability distribution. Okay, and again, in principle, there are, uh, it is possible that uh, multiple different, uh, essentially different strategy can give rise to the same probability. But in the self-testing, we somehow want a unique S tilde that that's, can realize this P. So only in this case, we can, uh, kind of verify this S tilde only from this P that we can observe, right? Uh, oh, sorry, but it's somehow uh, too good be, to be true, right? Because uh, there are at least two kind of uh, free mo manipulation that we can do to a strategy that does not affect the correlation it generates, okay? So the first one is that we attach a trivial accelerated state, it could be any state, 
It's just we, we don't measure it at all. So it will not affect the uh, probability that the strategy generates. And again, we can change some, change the local basis of the two players, which is again, will not affect the probability distribution. Okay, so if S and S tilde are different only in these ways, we will call this S tilde is a local dilation of S, and we use this uh, hook arrow notation to, to, to denote this uh, relation between those two strategies. Okay, now we are technically ready to define what a self-test mean, okay, so, uh, because in, in, in this uh, scenario, the best way we, we can hope for is that S tilde is a local dilation of any realization or any strategy of P, which means uh, it's okay that there are multiple S generate the same P as long as they can all be mapped to this canonical S tilde with this uh, hook arrow. Okay, so in self-testing, we, we say a correlation self-test uh, strategy, if any uh, real strategy realizing P uh, will have this relation with the canonical S tilde. Uh, all right, then uh, let's give, uh, le let's see a few examples of self-testing. Okay, so maybe the first and the minimal example in self-testing is from, is the one from the Bell inequality. Right, the CHSS version, okay, where we have a, a state, the, the qubit qubit EPR pair and those uh, Pauli measures X and Z for, for the two players. And we, uh, okay, it uh, was proved uh, in uh, approximately 1980s uh, that this strategy is self-tested uh, by the correlation it generates, right? Then uh, also after that, uh, people found more examples of self-testing. Then people start to ask, right, what strategy can be self-tested? Okay, so first it uh, has to be at least a quantum, meaning that it has to generate some non-classical correlation like what uh, CHSH strategy does. Um, and, and also uh, because uh, strategy S always consists of uh, uh, state and the measurement, so this question can be broken down into the two sub-questions, right? Uh, so which state, we can ask which state can be self-test and which measurement can be self-test. Okay, so for example, by self-testing a state, we essentially mean that, oh, given a state, can I find a strategy that is first a self-test and second, it incorporates its state. Okay, so let's take a closer look at those two sub-questions. Okay, for the question about the state, the picture is uh, somehow clear because we already know that, okay, all bipart pure states can be self-test in this uh, bipartite Bell scenario. And more recently, uh, actually very recently, uh, there's a work showing that, oh, actually uh, any multi-partite states can be self-test in the network. So the picture for the self-testing of states is uh, quite clear. But on the other uh, side of the story, the self-testing of measurement is uh, more complicated. Okay, so uh, first of all, it is known that uh, we can only self-test the real measurement. Uh, this is because uh, uh, we don't have this issue for state because in the Schmidt basis, every state is, every bipartite state can always take a real but uh, it is not true for measurement. Uh, in general, we can not make sure that we can find a basis where all the measurements uh, are real or have real entries in its uh, matrix representation. And if, uh, and in this case, uh, we can only self-test the real measurement because if the real measurement and its complex conjugates will always give rise to the same uh, probability distribution, and we cannot distinguish them. So the best one can hope for is self-testing for real measurements. Okay, so for this, uh, what we have known is that we can self-test uh, any combination of uh, X and Z, which is essentially all two-dimensional real projective measurement. And we also know that tensors of Pauli's can be self-tested in the 
a qubit case, qubit case, multiple qubits. And there are also few examples in uh, higher dimensions. Okay. The point is that we don't have a general result so that like we, what we have for states. And uh, in this work, we essentially prove that all real projective measurements can be self-tested, okay? And to be more precise, uh, for any uh, local dimension D, we can construct uh, binary observables T1 up to T uh, sub approximately D square, uh, such that uh, this following strategy is a self-test, right? So here, uh, the strategy will employ a D-dimensional uh, maximally entangled states, okay, and then mm, T1 up to D uh, plus one, uh, T, T plus one will be Alice's operator, and also this uh, arbitrary observable O tilde will, belongs to, will belong to Alice, and then, uh, Bob will use uh, all those uh, observables that we construct. And we can show that this uh, strategy is a self-test and moreover it is a robust self-test, which means that if uh, someone can generate a correlation that is close to what this s tilde does, then the strategy he employs should be close to this s tilde in some sense, yes. Uh, and also, uh, in this construction, since uh, this uh, maximally entangled state, together with those tilde, T tildes are, are in independent from O tilde, they are uh, fixed. The only requirement is that uh, they uh, and this O tilde all have the same local dimension D. So uh, we will, uh, uh, present uh, uh, on how to construct those details uh, just in, in in a minute, but uh, it's I will promise you this is not complicated. It's everyone can construct write write down their matrix uh, very easily. Yes, okay. And another thing I want to add about this result is that uh, the question set here, as we can see, it's uh, we have. Uh, D plus one plus one, which is D plus two uh, observables for Alice, which is the, which means there are D plus two questions for Alice and approximately the, at the level of D square, number of questions for Bob. So the question set is a uh, polynomial size in the dimension D, uh, but nevertheless, the answer set is uh, constant size because um, all those T's are binary observables, meaning that there are only two outcomes and this O tilde, it can have multiple outcomes, but it's a fixed thing, so uh, so the answer set is constant sized. Uh, okay, so uh, apart from this, I actually would like to introduce another result, which I call the DIY self-test, uh, because it is essentially a new method to construct uh, self-tests. Uh, and it's a very handy uh, methodology, so I'm, I'm sure after this talk you will be able to construct your own self-test very easily. But, uh, and in this uh, new technology is essentially a generalization of uh, the technique that we use to prove our first theorem. So let's take a closer look. Uh, at the first theorem and how we prove this. Okay, so for the method, uh, we will call it a post hoc self-testing. And what does it say? Oh, it essentially take a initially self-test strategy S tilde, which could be CHSH strategy or any strategy from the literature that has been proved uh, uh, to be self-test. And we consider an additional observable, this O tilde. And we ask, what do we, if we extend our original strategy by uh, plug in this uh, O tilde, for example, on Bob's side, and ask whether it is still a self-test, right? So the idea is somehow uh, uh, the following, right? Because this S tilde itself is a self-test, 
uh, from the correlation, we can already certify the state and uh, Alice's operator AX, then uh, this, act, this AX will generate some correlation with this new observable O tilde, and from those correlations, and mm, then we can further certify this uh, new observable O tilde, right? And, and this is actually uh, not something that we invent. This similar idea have implicitly in pre employed in previous works, and it is actually first summarized and named in, in a very good review paper of this field. Okay, to be more clear about this picture uh, of post hoc self-testing, uh, let's say we have a S tilde, which is a self-test. So from its correlation, we can certify the underlying uh, strategy. Now if we ask a new question, for example, to Bob, then it has to perform a new measurement corresponding to this O tilde, and, it will, and the correlation table it generates will essentially be a little bit larger than uh, the previous one, the one on the left-hand side, right? And then the black part, the upper part, is exactly the same because uh, for that part, of the, the things are not changed. And for this uh, lower part, the red part, it uh, contains some uh, statistic about this O, uh, this O tilde, this new observable. Right. And if we can fully characterize this O tilde from the red part, then we can say that this uh, uh, extended, ex little bit of extended strategy, S tilde prime, is again a self-test. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Thank you. And we have developed uh, the criterion for this uh, postdoc trick, and we have shown that oh, if um, whenever your uh, new observable O tilde satisfies this uh, condition, then uh, you're, you are safe, right? You can say that you can extend your strategy and it is uh, still a self-test, right? And uh, because this uh, uh, existen existential nature of this condition, uh, it is hard to characterize the set of all O tilde satisfying this this star condition, but it can be checked via some indefinite programming. Uh, okay, and, and again, this is, a, uh, this is only a sufficient condition. We don't know whether it is necessary, but we have examples where this condition is not satisfied and it's not a self-test, but so uh, we will guess this is also a necessary condition, right? And, and, and uh, as I said before, this, uh, in this condition, um, it, this condition is, is extensional, which means it's hard to use in practice. Uh, so we give out a special case for binary observables, uh, where these conditions can be uh, provided in the closed form, and it's uh, much easier to use. Right. So whenever this is satisfying this condition, it lives in the signature of the span of your uh, old observables, those AX, uh, then your extended strategy is again a self-test. Right. So this, is, this only works for binary observables. Right. And, and actually this is uh, how we're gonna prove our main results. So let's see how we do this. Okay, so first we, very carefully choose a initial strategy uh, that is a self-test. It is given in the previous work and it in already involves those TX and TYs and this maximally entangled state. Uh, and, and here those TX and TYs are corresponds to some rank one projections where the vectors are just uh, forming the uh, a regular, uh, forming the vertices of a regular D plus one simplex, right? In the two dimensional cases, I guess it's sometimes called a trial state. And in the three dimensional case, those vectors are forming this uh, uh, vertices of a tetrahedron. Okay, so it's not uh, something very complicated. It can construct. Okay, now let's uh, use our criterion for the first time. Okay, so let's now plug in some uh, new observables on Bob's side. Uh, to give some, uh, to, to give a extension of the original strategy. 
And here, those new observables are in the form of uh, uh, TI plus TJ, uh, and we take the signature, and just by using our criterion, we can show that this will remain self-tested because the, the criterion is satisfied, right? Okay, so uh, actually we, now we can use our criteria again because we are, uh, we ha are having more observables on both sides, which means we are uh, more powerful than before, so we can certify more uh, observables on that side. So here, actually, what happens here is that we can show that uh, all those observables on both sides, they already span the space of uh, d-dimensional symmetric matrices, right? So which means uh, whatever I have for for this O tilde, as long as it's binary projective measurement, it will always uh, gonna be in the span, so it will satisfy the criteria again. So we are gonna say that this uh, is again a self-test, which is pretty close to our final results, right? Because in the final result, we don't have limitations on the output of this observable, but uh, it can be done by regarding a, for example, a L output measurement as a as L different binary ones, right? So informationally speaking, they carry the same amount of information. If we can self-test one, then we can self-test uh, the other. And uh, we already know that we can self-test all binary ones, so we conclude we can conclude that we can self-test uh, any projective measurement, no matter uh, how many me uh, measurement output it has. Okay, so this is how we achieve our main result. Okay, so finally, let me get to into this uh, new technique, which we call the iterative self-testing. Okay, so as we already seen before in the previous proof, we essentially use this post hoc trick twice, right? Uh, we extend uh, the set of observables on both sides first, then we do the same uh, for Alice. And, and we can do this in, we could do this in two iterations in our examples. Uh, uh, this is because we choose our initial strategy very carefully, but nevertheless, we can ask that, uh, a general question. For any initial strategy, uh, what can we get eventually from this iterative using of post self-testing, and also with how many iterations can we do that? Okay, and for this, we developed this theory, which is uh, kind of surprising to me, because I didn't expect that uh, before. So it basically said, oh, if your uh, binary observable L tilde lives in the Jordan algebra generated by either Alice operator or Bob's operator, then your L tilde can be uh, self-tested in this way. And moreover, it can be done with uh, with a iteration of the number of uh, approximately logarithm in the local dimension. Okay, so just to uh, remind you, uh, a Jordan algebra is just uh, uh, the in a normal associative algebra, we re replace the uh, associative product with this uh, Jordan product, which uh, somehow preserve the the Hermitianness of the matrices, right and also, uh, whenever this Jordan algebra generates the space of the whole, uh, whole space of the real symmetric matrices, uh, it is equivalent to that uh, these observables AX have a trivial centralizer, the multiple of identity, right, which again can be easily checked. And in this case, uh, everything can be self-tested, right? And, and also, uh, we can show that uh, iteration it's necessary. We can we have some examples where uh, uh, O lives in this uh, Jordan algebra, but it cannot be self-tested in the first iteration. So this is a really non-trivial trick to use iterations. Okay, so to sum up, the two things that I would like you to take away from my talk is that the first thing we can construct a self-tested strategy for an arbitrary uh, real projective measurement. The second thing is that uh, whenever you have a O tilde that lives in the Jordan algebra generated by your, uh, by, by the 
operators of the strategy you choose at the beginning, then you can construct a self-test from that. Uh, okay, uh, so maybe a, more, a, few, question, a few open questions um, in this direction is that uh, in our construction of uh, self-testing and arbitrary projective measurement, uh, we have a question set in a, in a polynomial of the local dimension. Right, uh, and we know there are previously some other results of self-testing which contains only. Yes. Okay, so it might be a little off-point question, but I'm wondering, since you can test uh, uh, arbitrary projective measurements, so can you incorporate these tools into some like uh, interactive proofs and uh, other areas like that, so these tools? Sorry, I, I didn't hear clearly of the last part of your uh, So can you, inter, uh, inter, uh, can you incorporate uh, these methods uh, with uh, uh, in interactive proofs uh, where you need to uh, make uh, other measurements? Like, uh, I'm not sure, but is there possibilities? I'm mean, just uh, interested. I'm not sure I understand your question clearly, but uh, what I can say is that this uh, I guess you were asking this about this uh, postdoc trick, right? You have yeah. something that is verified at the beginning, and you use it to to self test uh, to to or to certify something something more. And actually, this idea is uh, it's somehow uh, frequently used in in this area, especially in the area of uh, cryptography, where we have some semi. Uh, uh, device independent scenario where you certify something, then you use those certified things to certify other things. I think the idea is somehow uh, commonly used in, in, in various areas. I hope this uh, will answer your questions partially yeah. at least. Thank you. Thanks. Do we have another question? So then I'm, I'm wondering, uh, in your method, what prevents you from proving this result for complex projective measurements? Uh, right, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, okay, so uh, what I, I can say is that at least in this uh, condition, right, this, uh, this very first result we got for postdoc self-testing, it has nothing to do with the measurement being complex or real. So in principle, it should apply to to complex measurement. Uh, the point is that for complex measurement, uh, uh, we, we need another definition of uh, self-testing. Yeah, if you are familiar with the area, th there are some approaches uh, uh, to, deal with, to deal with it. For example, we can allow only uh, complex measurement and it's a uh, complex conjugate in the, in, in the, in the, in the realization. And then for that, uh, I think this, uh, criterion should also apply to, to that case in something. It's just, uh, it is actually one of our next step uh, of this work. <laughs> okay, so thanks for the question. Thank you very much. Let's thank uh, both the speakers of this session. Thank you. Thank you.